We've gathered this evening to mourn the passing and celebrate the life of Raul Ramos. In your presence uh, this evening and your, your calls and messages have all been a sign of love and support for the Ramos and Aguilar family that means more than you can imagine. I, I want to read a message that Joe shared with me the other day. He said, we apologize if we didn't return your phone call or respond to your text or your social media post, but rest assured that we did read each and every word of each and every text. We read every comment on social media and are so blessed by the outpouring of love you have extended to us. It's been a very difficult time for us, and we thank you and we love you. This is such a difficult time, and there's no words that we can share tonight that can take away the pain that you're feeling right now. We want you to know that if our church can be of service to you in any way as you grieve this heavy loss that we are here, our church's grief share ministry meets on Monday evenings, and that next session will begin in September. And you're certainly welcome to join us in that and in anything we do here. After the death of one of his own dear friends, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And in the verses that follow this one, we see our Savior weep in intense grief and heartbreak and agony. And then he raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. This evening, we rest in the assurance that Jesus weeps with you as you suffer. And by the promise of Christ Jesus, our Lord, we believe that he will indeed raise Raul from the dead. Our hearts ache with you as you say goodbye to Raul far too, far too soon. And we cling with you to the promise of heaven's hope and resurrection through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray together this evening. Lord, please bless, comfort, and heal the Raul Ramos family. As we mourn with Alyssa and Raul's parents and Joe and Blanca and all of their family and friends in the face of this tragedy, we ask you to fill their broken hearts with peace that passes all understanding and heaven's hope. And we ask these things in the precious, powerful, death-conquering name of our crucified and resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, who suffers with us. Amen. Channel 5 did a really cool story on uh, Raul's life and the life of his colleague at San Benito, and, and we want to just watch this story together tonight. It's been, it's been a very hard week. You know, nobody anticipates anything like this to happen. Laura Garcia is the head athletic trainer for San Benito CISD. She worked closely with both athletic trainers, Robert Garza and Raul Ramos. You can tell in the community, you can tell here in the, in the sports complex, um, there's just a sense of, of loss. You can, you can feel that sadness permeate through the walls. Both started with the district around four years ago. We look for individuals to be part of our family here 
it's about the student first, and uh, both these men cared about their students. They cared about their athletes. Garza served as the high school athletic trainer. Anybody just wanted to be around Robert. You know, he had that magnetic personality. He was just a genuine, happy person, the jokester of the group. He truly believed in service. He served the athletes um, to try to get better. And Ramos was the athletic trainer for their ninth grade campus, the Veterans Memorial Academy. He truly cared about them. He gave them the five-star treatment. He did everything right for that athlete and to advocate for that athlete, made sure that he came to work. I'm gonna Senior football player and track athlete Homer Quiro says he was honored to have been able to get to know both of them. You know, this this, this season is going to be all about them. This, we're going to play for them and we're going to do everything. We, we're going to work hard for them too. They deserve it. Just not seeing him, um, it's going to be tough getting used to. Stephanie Rosales, Channel 5 News at 6. Hello, my name is Dulce Garcia and I am a uh, friend of Alyssa's and Alyssa is very special to me. Um, she has asked me to read the obituary this evening. Raul Ramos, 32, passed away suddenly due to an automobile accident on Friday, June 10th, 2022 in San Benito, Texas. Raul was born on June 14th, 1989 to Ricardo and Cristina Ramos in Longview, Texas, the youngest of three children. Raul was active, played soccer and ran track throughout high school, that is, when he wasn't injured. Raul had many strains, breaks, and bites while growing up, molding him into a tough-minded adult and making him passionate about helping others with injuries. Raul earned a master's degree from the University of Texas at Tyler, where he also spent time as an athletic trainer. Raul longed to be closer to his roots. He had traveled all over the country, as well as Thailand and Mexico. But he did some research and discovered the Rio Grande Valley and decided this is where he wanted to live. Raul was first hired by Brownsville ISD as an athletic trainer, then moved to San Benito ISD where he has been helping athletes recover from injuries. Raul was a hard worker and thrived as a trainer. He always wanted to improve his knowledge and care, so he was constantly researching and studying new techniques for rehabilitation. Raul met his soulmate. Alyssa Aguilar in March of 2019, and they have been inseparable ever since. They were married on December 19th, 2021. Raul and Alyssa both had a love for their dogs, Casey and Mapache. Raul enjoyed woodworking and used his talent to remodel their home and build wooden lawn ornaments for Christmas decorations. Raul was handy and could fix just about anything around the house. He and Alyssa enjoyed working in their yard, cooking meals at home, watching television, or just cuddling and talking about their days. Raul had never lost touch with his lifelong friends and was close to his family. He was someone who put everyone else's needs before his own and was known to stop in the middle of a project to help others. For example, he and Alyssa volunteered at the Special Olympics, impacting countless lives. Raul was soft-spoken, kind, and affectionate. He worked hard to make a difference in many students' lives and touched many others along the way. Raul is survived by his wife, Alyssa, parents, Ricardo and Cristina Ramos, brother, Jose Ramos, Spouse Patsy, sister Christy Ramos, father and mother-in-law Joe and Blanca Aguilar, nieces Chriselle and Celia, Ramos, Lily, Trini, and Ellie Aguilar, 
Best friends, Ed, Jeff, Hector, Heath, and Noah. Thank you for being here. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found Was blind but now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail, and mortal life shall cease, I shall. Within the veil, a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. But when we Bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. We've no To sing God's praise than when we first begun. Dulce comunión la soy en los brazos de mi Salvador, qué gran bendición en su paz me da, hoy yo siento en mí su tierno amor, libre, salvo del
again in the promise of his love and I will praise the mighty name of Jesus praise the Lord the lifter of my head praise the rock of my salvation all my days My anxious heart, why so upset? When trials come, how you so easily forget to cast your burdens upon the Lord. Jesus cares, He cares for you, and I will praise the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, the lifter of my head. Praise the rock of my salvation. All my days are in His faithful hands. I will praise the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, praise the Lord, the lifter of my head. Praise the rock of my salvation. All my days are in His faithful hands. Please.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Jasmine Daniels, and I am a good friend of Raul and Alyssa. I'd like to read something from God's Word. If you'd like to follow along and join me, please stand and open up your Bibles to the book of Psalm, chapter 96. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. If you have something different, that's totally fine. If you don't have a Bible, you may follow along on the screen. Psalms chapter 96. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Four. Great is the Lord. He is the most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. The gods of other, sorry, honor and majesty surround him. Strength and beauty fill his sanctuary. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. Tell all the nations, the Lord reigns. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. He will judge all peoples fairly. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with his truth. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Good evening. My name is Dan Gomez. I'm the athletic director for San Benito Athletics. Ramos family, Alyssa, on behalf of our athletic family, we're here with heavy hearts and our deepest con um, condolences to your families. We hired Raul in 2018, and uh, it was a fast four years. We were lucky enough to have him for that time. Even if we just met Raul for one day, that was better than never meeting him at all. Our time was precious. Raul was good to our students. He was good to our coaches. And uh, we will always remember from that. He'll be missed dearly by his colleagues and by his athletes. I would like you to know that we're a family forever. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Uh, okay. My name is Laura Garcia. And I was Raul's co-worker for four years at San Benito CISD. In those four years of working together, I learned so much about Raul's character. Raul was a reserved person to most people who first met him. It took time to peel away those layers and get to his true self. I was lucky enough to be able to get to know him as an athletic training colleague and as a friend. You see, Raul and I were very similar. Uh, we keep our friend group pretty close-knit. So when I could say he's my friend, I truly mean it. You see, being an athletic trainer is incredibly different than most uh, nine to five office jobs. Uh, if you were to ask any athletic trainer that you come across, we spend so much time together. It's hard not to become family-esque. That's the type of environment Raul and the staff at San Benito tried to create for ourselves and our students. It was just that, a type of family. 
Raul was very dedicated to his athletes. He was so meticulous when it came to treating them. I always said Raul gave his athletes the five-star service. They might as well have been pros. <laughs> you see, Raul worked with ninth graders. <laughs> they were far from it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's just the way he was. <sighs> Raul kept me in line when it came to the details of any given concern around the athletic training department. I came to rely on him a lot. Uh, especially when it came around to those coaches and services. You know, he, he made sure that everything was up to par because we had to make sure that whenever those coaches traveled away from us, that they could help the athlete if it ever needed to happen. I can't tell you how many times I'd see 6055, that's his extension, and it would say VMA trainer on my phone. And knowing that that clarifying question was just around the corner, because he was giving me a call, and I know that, again, he was into the details. I came to rely on Raul to make sure everything that we presented as a staff was up to par. Raul was a very genuine person. Whether it was at work or when it came time to get to know anyone he came in contact with. One thing I will forever be grateful about Raul is that he took the time to slow me down at work. As athletic trainers, we have a lot on our plates. We treat countless athletes. At San Benito CISD, we have, give or take, 800 athletes. And there's three of us, or was. As a staff, we would meet every week. But it was Raul's idea to bring food. <laughs> and have our meetings while eating and talking. During those meetings, you know, we would talk about business, but then business would end, and we'd get to know each other. God has a plan for us, and I am grateful that the Thursday before Raul passed, we were uh, getting our CPR recertification and he invited me to breakfast as a staff of three. We sat at the restaurant, had great conversation. Uh, he was excited. He was going to go to Longview and celebrate uh, his uh, marriage to Alyssa with his family, uh, which he loved his nieces. Uh, he was super excited to go see them, and then he was excited to go to Mexico soon after. And we had great conversation, and I'm forever grateful that we were able to do that one last time. <sighs> like I said, Raul was a private person, but I did get to know him. Some things I know about Raul, he loved his wife, Alyssa. He loved his two dogs, so that meant whenever he found kittens, guess who got the call? <laughs> Me. He loved to cook. And boy, could he cook, but so could Alyssa. And to be quite honest, I liked Alyssa's cooking a little bit better. <laughs> and he loved to travel. <sighs> Alyssa, I was lucky enough to be able to meet you. You are a beautiful soul. And you were a shining spot for him. When Raul first told me he was going to get married, you know, like I said, he was private. Not many people knew that he was even married, to be quite honest, when it came to San Benito CISD. But he told me. I was so excited for him. He found the person that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with. He was so proud of you. He was a proud husband. Alyssa, I can't tell you how many times Raul told, would tell me of all of your accomplishments. If I did, I'm pretty sure you'd be a little embarrassed. You and Raul were the perfect match. You were his better half. I can't like I said, I can't tell you how many times he talked about you. I pray for strength for Alyssa and for the Ramos family in this time. May God bless Raul's soul. Thank you.
what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Yeah. Can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees, will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? I'll be able to speak at all I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Or will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? How will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine I can only imagine Yeah I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine I can look at magic. When all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. In morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus, give me
Just give me Jesus. When I come to die, oh, when I come to die, oh, when I come to die, give me Hello, family and friends. <clears throat> Thank you for being here. <clears throat> My name is Jesse Guerrero. I had the pleasure of working with Raul in Brownsville, where he became part of our athletic training family before he began working in San Benito. We are gathered here today in memory of Raul. As we pray, as we pay our respects, I know his spirit looks down upon us with gratitude and joy. Raul was always optimistic, even in the darkest of times. Beyond that, he was genuinely kind and giving, truly a one-of-a-kind soul, a soul, a soul that has now taken place amongst the stars, for he was fearless of death, he was brave, and he was courageous. Those traits made us brothers. So, Raul, as you now take your seat upon your throne, I ask you to guide us in spirit. For those who are left here roaming this earth will forever cherish your guidance. And in return, we will keep your spirit alive in our memories, meditations, and prayers until the day we are once again reunited amongst the stars in the kingdom above. You once told me, you once told me the man you one day wish to become confident and outspoken. We discussed how a man has only the power of his word and action. And we came to the conclusion that power resides where man believes it to reside. And it can be tricked like a shadow on the wall where a single man can cast a very large shadow and truly believe, I truly believe you were much more powerful than you could have ever imagined. And you casted a shadow that many could not stand in. You are a hero at heart, and you will be missed tremendously. For it is not goodbye, but only see you later, bud. I'll love you. We will all love you forever and always. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Nora y soy amiga de Raúl y Alessa. Raúl, el último mensaje que recibí tuyo fue el día jueves y dice, gracias Nora, te quiero decir gracias a ti 
por tus enseñanzas, por las risas que nos dejas, por haber compartido unos años de ti con nosotros. Somos dichosos en haber coincidido en esta vida contigo. Como tú me decías, híjole, Nora, híjole. Ahora te digo yo a ti, Raúl. Híjole, Raúl, híjole. ¿Cómo te vamos a extrañar? Thank you. Thank you, Nora. And thank you, all of you, for being here. Uh, my name is Pedro Reina. But my friends, they call me Pete. So did Raul. Um, I'm lucky enough to call Raul my friend. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to say today, um, so many words came to mind, but so did so many memories. And I wanted to share a story about Raul that I feel captures what he was as a person and as a friend. About five years ago, I met Raul through our mutual friend, Hector, uh, at a party. I offered him a beer like I always did. He said no, like he always did. <laughs> and I, I remember we rambled on about podcasts and what we listened to, and uh, we started talking about Joe Rogan, and um, which led us to talking about hunting, which led us to talking about game meat, like deer and boar and stuff. And we talked about how healthy it was, and it wasn't processed, it, wasn't, it was better for you, right? <laughs> and I mentioned uh, I had never hunted before, but that I wanted to try game meat. Well, I didn't remember this, again, we were at a party, uh, but I will remember this, and this is how I know. Fast forward about a week or so, and I receive a call from an unknown number, and I answer and I say, hello, who's this? And he goes, hey, is this Pete? I go, yes, who's this? <laughs> He's like, hey, bud, um, it's Raul, Hector's friend. I was like, oh, yeah, hey, how are you doing? What's up? He says, listen, I uh, hope you don't mind, but I asked Hector for your number and wanted to ask you if you wanted or you'd be interested in some boar meat. I remember you said you wanted to try it. I said, yeah, I said that. Sure. <laughs> I'll take it off your hands. Um, what could happen? Um, <laughs> So uh, he sends me his address, I end up going to his old apartment in Brownsville, and he brings me up to his apartment, and I walk through his, his mess, and we end up in his kitchen, and he brings out an ice chest, and he pulls out this leg of a boar. <laughs> Hair still on it and everything. <laughs> and he says, so what piece do you, what piece do you want? <laughs> and confused, right? I'm like, the good part? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me, man. Uh, so he laughs and um, he starts telling me that you know he had to he he had gone with his boss somewhere and this boy was destroying his boss's ranch and he helped kill it whatever. Um, so he tells me hold on to that side and he's and he's cutting he's going away and he told me he had to go to Walmart buy all these things these knives ice chests ice to hold this thing. And while he's doing this, I'm holding one end of a boar, and he starts telling me about like the muscles and the bones and ligaments, right? As never, never missing an opportunity to educate me. Um, so about 30 minutes go by, we get to the bone, and it's just not getting through. Um, at this point, it's just two guys in the kitchen just sawing away at a bone. Um, and after about an hour of getting um, boar blood all over his kitchen, um, we start wrapping them up. Um, this is when our old asks, did you bring an ice chest? Again, I had no idea. No, I don't have an ice chest. He said, okay. So he starts, he starts packing up my portion into the ice chest he just bought. And he insists that I take it home. And again, I fought with him and I argued with him. I said, you had done enough. This, this is way more than I needed. Uh, so as I walked out of his apartment with my boar meat and new ice chest, <laughs> So I walked out of his apartment, I didn't know how much more I would be seeing Raul. I had just met him. I didn't know that I would end up having lunch with him once a week. I didn't know that we would end up messaging each other almost daily. I didn't know how unique and kind of a person he was. 
But looking back, I felt that story kind of captured what he was as a friend, as a person, how good of a listener he was, <laughs> how much he would do just by a comment that you made, even if you didn't remember saying the comment. Um, you could arrive to his house at his door with, with nothing, but he always made sure you left with something. That was the kind of person that he was, and that's the kind of person that I feel we should all try to be. Raul, thank you for everything, my friend. The only bright side I see in this is I'll never be able to tell you I did not eat the board's meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it was a legit health concern. Uh, and deep down inside, I think you knew that too. Uh, I love you, bud. I miss you. And wherever you are, please save a seat for me until we see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for that wonderful story. Um, you forgot something. Um, Mel was waiting for you in that car for an hour. <laughs> and uh, he apologized. Uh, Raul apologized to Mel uh, after he learned that Mel was waiting in that car on that summer for an hour. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hector Cardoza. I am a friend, a dear friend of Raul. And uh, I, I was introduced uh, to him by a, an acquaintance, a friend of mine, a friend of a friend. And uh, how, how I met him was through a phone call. And uh, as a matter of fact, I am a real estate agent, and uh, he needed a place to live. And so he was looking for a place or a recommendations to, to, to live. And so I recommended a place where my, now my wife used to live, and uh, he lived there for, for a year or so. Um, that's how I got introduced to him, and I was the very first person that, um, that got, to get that, get, got to show him what South Texas was all about. So with that said, um, I, will have, I have two letters, one in English and one in Spanish. Uh, so... We'll start with the English one. My beloved friend, we mourn your loss. In the last few days, we have remembered you and reminisced the good times we shared together. We laughed, we cried, and we hugged. Having intimate conversations with one another, I can't help but to realize that the common denominator was always how good you made us feel, how special you made us feel. And for that, we thank you. Thank you for the laughter, for the profound conversations, and for, the, and for being a great listener. And with that said, you were my own personal therapist. Thank you for being a great son, brother, husband, uncle, friend, neighbor, colleague, and the list goes on and on. You were truly a great example of what a human being should be. One last favor, my friend. Please look out for all of us from up above. I thank the Lord for your life and to have had the privilege of knowing you. I love you, bud. Ahora vamos a español. Una carta para mi amigo Raúl. Mi querido amigo, nos duele mucho tu partida. En estos últimos días hemos hablado de ti recordando los buenos momentos que hemos pasado a tu lado. Hemos reído, hemos llorado, y nos hemos abrazado. Teniendo estas conversaciones íntimas con tus seres queridos, me di cuenta que el denominador común siempre fue lo bonito que nos hacía sentir, lo especial que nos hacía sentir. Y por ello te lo agradezco. 
Gracias por tantas risas, conversaciones tan íntimas y profundas y por siempre escucharme, mi terapeuta personal. Gracias por ser un gran hijo, hermano, esposo, tío, amigo, vecino, colega y la lista continúa. Tú eres un gran ejemplo de lo que es ser un buen ser humano. Te pido, te pido un último favor de los muchos que te pedí. Ve por nosotros que te queremos desde el paraíso. Sé que lo harás. Le doy gracias a Dios por tu vida y por haber coincidido en esta. Te quiero, mano. Gracias.
maravilla mi Señor Tú el alfarero y yo el barro Molde a mi vida a tu parecer Haz como tú quieras, hazme un nuevo ser Me dijo no me gustas Voy a quebrantar Y en un vaso nuevo Te voy a transformar Pero en el proceso Te voy a hacer llorar Porque por el fuego y hacer pasar Quiero una sonrisa Cuando todo va mal Quiero una alabanza En lugar de tu queja Quiero tu confianza en la tempestad Y quiero que aprendas También a perdonar Me dijo no me gustas Te voy a quebrantar Y en un vaso nuevo te voy a transformar Pero en el proceso Te voy a hacer llorar Porque por el fuego Te voy a hacer pasar Quiero una sonrisa cuando todo va mal Quiero una alabanza en lugar de tu queja Quiero tu confianza en la tempestad Y quiero que también a This next song uh, was requested, or requested for uh, um, Raúl's mom. Um, requested this song. Este canto lo pidió la mamá de Raúl. Este canto precioso. Cansado del camino, sediente de ti, un desierto he cruzado, sin fuerzas he quedado, vengo a ti. Luché como soldado y a veces sufrí. 
Y aunque la lucha he ganado, mi armadura he gastado, vengo a ti. Cansado del camino, sediento de ti. Un desierto he cruzado, sin fuerzas he quedado, vengo a ti. Luché como soldado y a veces sufrí. Y aunque la lucha he ganado, mi armadura he gastado, vengo a ti. Sumérgeme en el río de tu espíritu. Necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediento de ti. Sumérgeme en el río de tu espíritu. Necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediente de ti. Cansado del camino, sediento de ti. Un desierto he cruzado, sin fuerzas he quedado, vengo a ti. Luché como un soldado y a veces sufrí. Aunque la lucha he ganado, mi armadura he desgastado, vengo a ti. Sumérgeme en el río de tu espíritu. Necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediento de ti. Sumérgeme en el río de tu espíritu. Necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediento de ti. Sumérgeme en el río de tu espíritu. Necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediento de ti. Sumérgeme. Sumérgeme. Sumérgeme, sumérgeme. Good evening, everyone. My name is Melissa Garcia, and I'm a good friend of Raul and Alisa, or Mel, like Raul used to call me. I'd like to read something from God's Word. If you'd like to follow along and join me, please stand and open up your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 91. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. If you have something different, that's fine. If you don't have a Bible, you may follow along on the screen. Psalms chapter 91. 
those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Verse 4. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Verse 8. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with the long life and give them my salvation. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Cristina Ramos, soy la mamá de Raúl Ramos. Antes que nada, quiero decirles a todos y a cada uno de ustedes que están aquí, gracias en el nombre de Raúl, él estará muy contento, muy satisfecho de ver cuánto lo apreciaban, cuánto lo aceptaron aquí en este lugar, le dieron la bienvenida no conocí a nadie, pero vino. Yo conozco parte de su, de su labor de trabajo, por lo que él me compartía. Y sé que él encontró un equipo, más que un equipo de trabajo que se apoyaban, que se conocía a, a Laura por medio de él. Sé que más que por trabajo, él trabajaba con amor con los niños, quería quitarles el dolor al momento, a veces era imposible y él se sentía mal. Pero en el nombre de él les digo muchas gracias y él está muy contento, feliz de que todos y cada uno estén aquí. De mi parte no tengo más palabras más que agradecerles, gracias por su apoyo, por estar aquí con nosotros, gracias de corazón. Buenas tardes, que Dios los bendiga. Good afternoon, my name is Jose Ramos, I'm Raul's older brother. If Raul was here right now, he would probably say, could you not find a smaller shirt to wear to my funeral? <laughs> That's, uh, there are two fundamental truths that I know about Raul. One, he was a service to others. He was committed to others. And it shows in hearing the stories about his friends, his colleagues. Honestly, I think you were all just family to him. The second fundamental truth is that Raul was love. Raul loved, just fill in the blank. He loved his wife. He loved his father-in-law. He loved his family. He loved people to probably cut him off in traffic. He loved his athletes, he loved, there was a phase that he even loved Korean anime music, so. 
but he loved. And thank you for being here to share in that love, in that memory of love. Perdón, al señor Aguilar le doy las gracias. Gracias por estar contento conmigo, por aceptarlo, hacerlo parte de su familia. Gracias por todo lo que usted está haciendo. Um, Elisa, teníamos muchas ilusiones, muchas cosas por delante, pero en el nombre de Raúl, perdóname Elisa, estoy feliz, fui feliz contigo Elisa, um, te quise mucho. Señor Aguilar, estoy contenta porque Raúl le dio alegrías, satisfacciones antes que angustias y preocupaciones. Y creo que él se empeñó por eso, por, por compartir y convivir y lo hizo todo con gusto, hacerlo feliz. Gracias, para que no se apurara por su hija. Estamos tristes porque estamos aquí, que echamos menos, ¿verdad, Raúl? Pero también nos gozamos. Es una celebración de vida que sabemos que Raúl está en un mejor lugar ahorita. Vamos a cantar unos coritos. Alabaré, alabaré. Señor, 
Te alabamos, Señor. Allá en el cielo, allá en el cielo, allá en el cielo No habrá más llanto, ni más tristeza, ni más dolor Y cuando estemos los redimidos allá en el cielo Alabaremos al Señor Allá en el cielo, allá en el cielo, allá en el cielo No habrá más llanto, ni más tristeza, ni más dolor Y cuando estemos los redimidos allá en el cielo Amén. This next song, um, it was a playlist that uh, Raul created uh, for Alyssa and uh, with songs that reflected their love for one another. And uh, this was one of those songs. It don't have a child. Don't pay your bills Won't buy you a home In Beverly Hills Won't fix your life In five easy steps Ain't the law of the land or the government, but it's all. My bro 
brother's keeper So the whole world will know that we're not alone And love will hold us together Make us a shelter to weather the storm And I'll be my brother's keeper So the whole world will know that we're not It's gonna be all right. 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 Thanks. I'm very short. Um, first, I want to thank everyone from the absolute bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for all the outpouring of love. I'm truly, truly appreciative to everyone who's here and everyone who's given words of kindness and donations of food. You have no idea how much I love it. Um, words can never express how thankful I am for all of your kindness and your love. Some things that have been said to me as we've been going through this grieving process in love is, you're so strong, and I don't know how you can do this. Well, I'm not handling it well. <laughs> the truth is, I'm very socially awkward, and it's one of the reasons Raul and I got along so well. While I'm going to miss my best friend, I'm so incredibly happy and blessed to have been his wife. He was, to me, simply the best. Throughout our time together, he taught me many things, how to care for plants, how to mow the lawn, how to be a good neighbor, a good citizen, how to be a great friend, and how to be there for others. Raul showed us, through his actions, what it meant to be your brother's keeper. And I feel that it is his hope for all of us, going forward, to continue to nurture and grow our relationships with those around us. I also really feel the need to add this last disclaimer. Raul would really like for everyone to go to therapy. Thank you so much. We love you, and we appreciate you. Thank you. Well, good evening. My name is Joe Aguilar. If you don't know who I am, I am Alyssa's dad. I am Raul's father-in-law. And I just want to start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys just don't know how much you have done. And every act of kindness has been deeply and gratefully appreciated. First thing I want to say tonight is just offer a word of apology. On behalf of the Aguilar and Ramos family, I just want to apologize to you if we did not return your phone call, or if we did not respond to your text, or we did not respond to your words on social media. As you can imagine, it's been a very, very, very difficult time. But hear me when I say this. We did read each and every text. We did read each and every comment on social media. And we are so blessed, truly blessed, by the outpouring of love that you have extended to us. And again, I just say thank you, thank you, and thank you. San Benito ISD, I want to say thank you for your outpouring of love to our families. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the messages. Thank you for the love that you have poured out on my daughter, Alyssa. Michaela Funeral Home, we all know that this tragedy was something that we had no idea what happened. There were so many unanswered questions, but yet Michaela Funeral Home did a great job walking with us through this process. 
And of course, I can't forget my familia of faith. First Baptist Church, Westlake, right where we are tonight. Dr. Stephen Parker and the staff have done nothing but extend a helping hand. Extend love. Gilbert, Dahlia, Chris, JT, guys, thank you so much. You don't know how much this means to us. Just funerals happen so fast, and you guys just said, how can I serve? And that means a lot. Just want to let you guys know that we love you. We thank you. We also want to welcome all of you that are watching online. We know there are so many people that who could not have made it tonight, or couldn't make it tonight, excuse me, because of distance and because it seems like COVID is making a comeback. We received so many messages over the last few days that I can't make it because I just tested positive for COVID. That includes one of Blanca's sisters and one of my brothers. And so we just want to say thank you for being here with us online as well. As you can imagine, last week for us was a week that was filled with some great, great highs and some very low lows, ups and downs. It all began about 10 days ago, 11 days ago last Sunday. We welcomed into our lives our third granddaughter, the fifth niece for Raul and Alyssa. Ellie made her way into this world, and we were on top of the world. Then Wednesday rolled around and we celebrated Lily's fourth birthday. It was just us, of course, because of COVID and all that ugly stuff that's going on around us, just the grandparents, and of course, Uncle Real and Auntie Alyssa. And we continued to feel like we were on top of the world. And I'm going to add a little thing here because this may be a joke later on, and you can ask me about this later. How many master's degrees does it take to light a candle? And then Friday came around and our world came tumbling down. Right around noon, we were informed of Raul's passing. We, my wife and I, met Raul about three years ago to the day. Alyssa brought him over to meet us on Alyssa's, I mean, on Lily's first birthday party. Lily, who is our oldest granddaughter, who I just mentioned, turned four just on Wednesday. And immediately, Raul made an impact on our family. And now, it's a life-lasting impact. And it's been difficult. As a pastor, I'm called to embrace and live out God's word. And I believe I do. But as a human, I also hurt as well. And I have to admit that this last week has been very, very, very difficult for my wife and I, and of course, our daughter, Alyssa. It's affected each and every one of us, and that's why you're here today. Friday, we just sat there. Saturday morning, I opened up God's Word, and we sat and we rested on this passage. So I want to invite you to open up your Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll be reading verses 6 through 8. If you don't have your Bibles, you can open up your Bible app or follow on the screens behind us. And if you would, in reverence to our Lord, would you please stand if you are able to as we read his word together. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 6 through 8. And the word of the Lord reads as such. So we are always confident that even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies for then we will be home with the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here in this place tonight because we hurt. We hurt because we've heard that Raul is no longer with us. But as we've learned tonight, he has touched so many lives. And we rejoice in that. 
But beyond that, we also rejoice in knowing that he is in your presence today. Because of what your word tells us. And we cling to your word because that word is what tells us, gives us hope that we will be together one day. So, Father, as we are here tonight and as we leave this place later, I just ask that you squeeze each and every heart a little tighter and give them all a peace that surpasses all understanding as only you can. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. You guys may be seated. This text from the Apostle Paul really says a lot about his heart. Really tells you a lot about who he is. And his heart for the Lord. And his longing to be with the Lord. And Paul in this text is being brutally honest about what his deepest desires are. He is telling us that he would rather be Be with the Lord then in this mortal, burden, groaning, hurting, decaying, dying body. And for the first time in this chapter, he's describing his future. His eternal body with Christ as being at home. He is utterly convinced that this is where he is heading. Because heaven is where he is meant to be forever. Paul's faith lets him know that the glory of his eternal life will far outweigh and outlast the suffering of this earthly life that he presently lives. And that makes him, that pulls him to want that life so much more. And of course it does. How could it not? And I know right now, That without a shadow of a doubt, that Raul is away from his earthly body and he is at home with his and our Lord. You see, Raul had a heart for the Lord. But he also had a heart for those that the Lord put around him. We've We've heard story upon story upon story upon story of those lives that he has touched. You see, Raul was christened into our family early. As I mentioned, Alyssa brought him over to Lily's first birthday party. And again, as any boyfriend and girlfriend relationship, he he began to come around. And as I mentioned, Lily at the time was one year old. And she was our only grandchild at the time. And she couldn't say Raul. So she began to call him Uncle Real. And after that, he became Uncle Real. And that nickname stuck. Shortly after that, with everyone else, he became real. And with the name real sticking, of course, comes the quirkiness of the Aguilar family. As you guys heard, and if you guys, you guys very well know, real is a very quiet person. He's a very private person who likes to keep to himself. But remember, he signed up for this. <laughs> and I say this because if you know Alyssa and myself, You guys know that we love our holiday swag. (laughs) Especially around Christmas time. Alyssa and I have a very extensive Christmas sweater collection that includes shirts and I could say maybe a few suits. We probably have enough Christmas clothing to last year round. And as an Aguilar family, we have this Christmas tradition where we exchange pajamas We purchase matching pajamas for pictures. Due to COVID, we have not been able to take Christmas photos with our two newest members of our family, Raul, Alyssa's husband, and Daly, who's married to JT. And as I mentioned, we only got to know Real for about three years. And I remember about 18, 20 months ago, he showed up at our doorstep with some Whataburger, as any good Texan would. (laughs) He wanted to sit down and talk to Blanca and myself. He wanted to let us know about his intentions, and he wanted to make Alyssa his wife. And of course, Blanca and I were both very excited. At this time, we had only known him for a little over a year, and at the height of COVID, we didn't really see each other a lot. But we did have quite a few conversations, and there was enough to know that our daughter had met the right guy. 
the man that God had for her. We were excited for the life that they were going to begin to build. A life of growing and going together. And that life of building together began immediately. And it was a life not only building together the oneness of life that God created through the covenant of marriage. But it also included the building of a home. Or rather the remodeling of a home. And it also included the building of a new family. Now, they did ask me to officiate the wedding, and I gracefully declined because I told them, all I want to be is family that day. Family is all I wanted, and I believe we got it. You know, there were times when Real would come over to the house to pick up something or maybe drop something off, and he would sit and chat with Blanca. Now, I know everyone here probably thinks that I'm the chatterbox of the house, but in all actuality, I am not. My wife is a social butterfly of the Aguilar family. Real really enjoyed sitting and talking with his mother-in-law. Every time that Real and Alyssa would go out of town, whether it be for business or pleasure, or if they had to work late, he would call Blanca and myself, and we would go over and take the dogs out or maybe dog sit or whatever it may be. But we would have to go and take care of Casey and Mapache. And now we know the real story behind Mapache. <laughs> and when I was out of town, I didn't want my wife walking our dogs late at night in the dark by herself. So I could always count on real to come over late evenings and take out Orbit and Mochi. Family. Building family. When they had AC problems, they would call us and they would have us wait for the AC technician to come over in their hot house. As I mentioned, they were in the process of remodeling their house and Real had called me one day and he had said, hey, I need some help carrying some boxes. Well, little did he say that there was boxes and boxes and boxes <laughs> and boxes and boxes. Did I say boxes? <laughs> boxes of tile. Now, we don't own a pickup truck. We both had little cars. And so it took us a few trips to get the boxes from the warehouse to their house. And then they were conveniently out of town when the wall molding came in. <laughs> and guess who got the call to go pick it up and deliver it to their house? Building family. Of course, along with work projects, tools are needed. Real needed some tools. So he came over to the house to pick up some tools. And I had a few extra things that I wasn't using. So I said, hey, you know, do you want these? And he said, sure, I'll take them. I said, you know what? I have an extra battery for them. But uh, JT has them with the drill. Uh, I'll get them back from us. And as he looked at the tools, he recognized the brand. And he said, oh, I still have your sander. Does that battery fit? I said, yeah, it does. <laughs> a couple of nights ago, and when I mean a couple of nights ago, it's probably about two weeks ago, I was sitting at my computer. Blanca and I were home alone, and uh, I was just, just looking up, doing some research on some cars because gasoline prices are going up, and they don't seem like they are going down. So I was researching hybrid cars, something that I could save money on gasoline with. Well, they showed up at our doorstep. I don't remember what exactly it was for, but they came in, and they start, we started talking, and I started telling them what I was doing and that I had looked at electric cars and I looked at hybrid cars, and I was stuck on a Ford hybrid pickup, and I told them, I think I'm going to pull the trigger on that later this year. And they were both excited, and they tell me, great, now we'll have a pickup truck to go pick up stuff that we need. Building family. Building a marriage. Building a home. Building a family. That was my prayer. And I believe that's exactly what God had given us. Back to our conversation the day that Raul had mentioned he wanted to marry our daughter. During this conversation, I learned about his love for Jesus. And Jesus shares these words with us in John 
chapter 13. John records them in verse 35. He says this. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. You see, love for others is what real lived out each and every day. He was never one to say no for an opportunity to serve someone. My mom sent me this text the other day about real. She said this. We asked him if he could help us take the TV from the wall. Alyssa and real came over one afternoon and helped Raul take the TV off the wall. He had also brought all the stuff that was needed to cover the hole on the wall. He patched the hole, sanded it down. Our wall was ready. Another time they came by, we needed help bringing in a small freezer again with a smile on his face. He helped bring the freezer into the house. This young man was an amazing young man. I asked him where he had learned to be such a handyman. He replied that he had learned from having to fix things on his own when he was going to college. My princess had found a diamond in Raul. We could call on Raul for anything, and he would be right over to help us. His friends, who you got to hear from just a little while ago, they were over a couple of nights ago, and they were sitting and chatting with Alyssa. And I even learned more about the life of real. Things I should have already known. But they were confirmed during these conversations. Things like, what an example of a good friend meant. That was all found in Raul. He was always there for special moments, trips, weddings. He even flew to Thailand to be with one of his friends at his wedding. He would always send birthday texts. He was the best dog watcher. And of course, as you heard earlier, those monthly dates, they were always something that they anticipated. They looked forward to having together. Raul was someone that you could always count on, even if you were stranded in the middle of nowhere. Just a few of the things that they had to say about Raul. Dulce said this. She said, one day I mentioned, I want an aloe plant. Alyssa replied, we have some. And of course, like every other conversation, they forget about what they were talking about or anything else. Well, lo and behold, as we heard earlier, Raul seems to show up with things that are requested. He showed up to the door of Dulce Ivan without Alyssa, but with an aloe plant. He had reminded Alyssa that I wanted one and told her that it wouldn't be a problem for him to drop it off at Dulce and, and Ivan's house since it was on his way home from work. Because that's who... Raul is. She also goes on to say, we are sad. She also says this. She goes, I recently learned that the aloe plant is a symbol of patience, endurance, and healing. I know that somehow, someone, somewhere knew we would need these virtues. So to my Alyssa Joy, play on her name, you are loved, you are seen, you are not alone. We will be your aloe from Dulce. Jesus said, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. But Raul's biggest love was his wife, my daughter, our daughter, Alyssa. And this brought us great joy. I remember the night he proposed to Alyssa and the excitement that she shared with us afterwards. He decorated her backyard with lights that read, Marry Me. And of course, in the background was playing the song by Aha, uh -huh, Take On Me. And he proposed to her. He knew just how much Alyssa loved being in her backyard. And he made sure that this was done right. He made sure that this would be the place that he would propose to her. Because he wanted 
to spend the rest of his life with her. And oh, how happy my princess was. Unfortunately, their marriage was cut short. But the short time that they had together, I truly, we truly enjoyed watching them grow together. Now, of course, due to COVID, they couldn't travel as much as they wanted to. So what they did is they focused on remodeling the house, building a house together. And watching Alyssa help real do things she never did growing up <laughs> brought such joy to our hearts. Things like helping him out in the yard, fixing up plants, learning how to cook. And when I mean learning how to cook, she actually used the oven and the stove. <laughs> and of course, there's the wallpaper project, but we won't talk about that. And I want to thank you, Mr. Ramos. I want to thank you. Le quiero dar las sinceramente gracias por cavando los shelves, por terminando el trabajo que había empezado Raúl. So, muchas gracias para eso. Este, si, si, si le robo un poquito de su tiempo, abusando de la confianza y de su... De, de, es, es suyo. De la, <coughs> buenas tardes. <coughs> Mi nombre es Ricardo Ramos. Soy el, el papá de Raúl. Este... Perdóneme, tengo un poquito de, 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 de pánico de escénico. Este, me tiemblan las piernas, ¿verdad? De, de nervios, pero me, me palpita y me tiembla el corazón de, de, de emoción, porque porque me estoy dando cuenta de del, del, del gran valor humano que, que tenía nuestro hijo. Eh, Verdaderamente siento así, ¿verdad?, de que, de que estoy, estoy agradecido con Dios porque, porque Raúl ha sido uno de los, de los grandes regalos que, que me ha dado Dios y yo tal vez no, 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 los, no lo aprecié tanto, ¿verdad?, como, como hoy me, me estoy dando cuenta del, el, del gran valor humano que, que él tenía y, y de verdad, este… Yo, yo no me siento egoísta ni positivo de, de, de poder compartir esa, esa gracia, que, que ese, ese cierto carisma que, que Raúl tenía para, para conquistar corazones, y, y porque él, él, él tenía una, una gran voluntad en, 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 en tener a, a, sus, a sus amigos, a sus colegas, a, a sus compañeros, mantenerlos en, en, en armonía, en... en en paz, en, en convivio y en, y, en, 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 y en alegría, porque también él tenía un gran sentido del humor, pero, pero, pero muy sano, ¿verdad? No debería decirlo yo, pero, pero, pero así lo siento, ¿verdad? Este, quiero agradecerle grandemente a, a todos ustedes por sus, por sus oraciones, por sus plegarias, este, por, sus, por sus palabras de, de, de aliento, de, de consuelo, y, pero a la vez quiero agradecerle grandemente a la familia Aguilar por, por darnos todo, todo su apoyo en, en, en estos momentos este, difíciles, cruciales de, de la vida que uno no, no está preparado pa, para afrontarlos. Pero a la vez quiero, quiero, darle, quiero la, darle las gracias a, a Elisa de una manera muy, muy especial porque pues ella, ella, ella fue la razón que, que, que mi hijo este, o nuestro hijo tuviera los últimos momentos felices de su vida terrenal y, y yo te agradezco eh, en nombre de todo mi familia, ¿verdad?, el, el, el cariño, el aprecio, el, el amor que, que, que le correspondiste a, a Raúl, porque yo sé que él te, él te, él te quiso, te ha querido y te, y te quedará siempre don, donde él esté, porque, porque no, no, no simplemente le abriste las, las puertas de tu casa, sino que le abriste las, las puertas de tu, de, tu, de tu corazón para que 
para que él pudiera realizarse mejor como, como, como un ser humano lleno de, 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 de cariño y de precio. Y tú, y tú pudiste complementar lo, 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 lo que nosotros no, no le podíamos dar ¿da? de nuestra parte. Gracias, gracias sinceramente a todos ustedes desde, desde el fondo de mi corazón y, 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 y que Dios, Dios les bendiga siempre. Y vamos a, a procurar que esa, que esa semilla de, 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 de amistad, de concordia, de, de todas esas cosas que, que Raúl pudo sembrar en nosotros, este, lo, 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 le guardamos un, 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 un momentito dentro de nuestro corazón, de nuestra mente y... y, y y si él verdaderamente por su, por su humor o por su, lo que sea, este les, los hizo sentir incómodos en, de alguna forma, de alguna manera, de, de mi parte, este, perdónenlo, este, porque, porque somos humanos ¿verdad? Y, y, y buscamos la perfección a veces, pero, 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 pero somos así. Y, 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 y no, no, no sé qué más decir, mi, mi sincero agradecimiento por, por siempre. Que Dios les bendiga. Este, señor Ramos, otra vez, gracias por terminar el, el proyecto de los gabinetes, porque era un proyecto que hubiera empezado su hijo y ahora ya están terminados y es algo que vamos a ver, algo que nos vamos a recordar por toda nuestra vida. So, le doy las sinceramente gracias por eso. Y, y nosotros se lo agradecemos mucho. Amén. Gracias por todo eso. Funerals are never fun. Some of the things that we hear at funerals a lot are words such as this. He's in a better place now. We will see, we will see you soon. I hear this. I see this on social media, but the sad reality of this statement is that it does not apply to everyone. Just because you say it, just because you write it, just because you think it, doesn't make it true. Now, hear me when I say this. I didn't make this up. Jesus said it himself. And I just want to reiterate what I said earlier, that I can say for, with all confidence that real was a disciple of Jesus. And today he is in the presence of our Lord. Now, I know that I may not have known real as long as most of you guys, as I mentioned, I only knew him for about three years. But I do know that he had love for Jesus and he had love for others. Some of you shared stories. I shared a few stories. But wait, there's more. I've got one more story I want to share with you. Because if you don't know the love that real has for others, all you got to do is walk down his neighborhood. The couple of his neighbors here tonight. And ask them who Raul Ramos is. Their response is going to be something like this. He's the young man that brings us cookies during Christmas. He's the guy that always offers assistance when he sees us doing something outdoors. He's the guy who cuts Miss Willie's yard when she's gone. And the list goes on and on and on. You see, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Those are the words of Jesus Christ himself. And as you're sitting here tonight, I want you to think about this. I want you to ponder in your mind, recall something or some time when you have given something up for someone else. And I'm not talking about helping out a family member because that's a given When was the last time you gave of your time or of your money or you, you came out of your comfort zone to help a total stranger? Maybe helped out at the local food bank. Maybe helped out at your church. Some of us don't even go to church. And I can already hear you saying, Joe, we don't need to go to church. Isn't God anywhere, everywhere? Yeah, he is. 
All I'm going to say is read the book of Hebrews. One last question. Okay, okay, it's a combo question. When was the last time you opened up God's word and spent time with God in his word? When was the last time you had a time of devotion? When was the last time you meditated on his word? When was the last time you prayed on his word? Sharing scripture on social media doesn't count. It does not count. Now with this being said, can you truly say without a shadow of a doubt that you will see Raul again? Is God tugging at your heartstrings right now? Because if any of these points have you thinking, have you doubting yourself as to what's going to happen when you take your last breath on this earth, I encourage you to come see me after today's service or reach out to me later. I would love to sit down and talk to you about what it is to become a follower of Jesus so that we can truly say, we will see you again, Raul. You see, I can rest on knowing where real is today. He's with our Lord. As a family, we've rested on these verses that I'm sharing with you tonight. Because it has brought us comfort. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8, I'll reread it for you guys again. It says, yes. We are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies for then we will be at home with the Lord. You see, real today is away from his earthly body. But he is at home with the Lord. A famous Baptist pastor by the name of D.L. Moody used to say this. He used to say, someday you're going to read in the paper that D.L. Moody of East Northfield is dead. Don't believe a word of it. Because at that moment I shall be more alive than I am now. America's pastor, the late great Billy Graham, said this. He said, heaven is our home, our ultimate place of complete peace, security, and joy forever. Raul Ramos, Uncle Real or real, as we call him, is home. We are saddened because he is not here, but we rejoice in knowing where he is today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word that has brought us so much comfort over the last several days. And it is your word that we are going to cling to. It is your word that we are going to embrace as we continue to walk through this next chapter of our lives without real. It's going to be difficult. But your word reminds us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And at this time, we cry out to you. Please make your presence felt much more today and in the days to come, the weeks to come, the years to come. Because we are going to need you ever so much more. This next song we are going to sing is One Day at a Time, Un Dia La Vez. And that's how we need and are going to live our lives. Because we are going to recall, we are going to remember, we are going to relive the good times that we shared with our beloved son, our beloved husband, our beloved uncle, our beloved friend. Be with us, Father, as we leave this place. And again, we cry out to you. Because you will comfort us. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
necesitado me encuentro Señor ayúdame hoy yo quiero saber lo que debo hacer muestra el camino que debo seguir Señor por mi bien yo quiero vivir un día a la vez Cante con nosotros Un día a la vez Mi Cristo Es lo que pido de ti Dame la fuerza para vivir Un día a la vez Ayer ya pasó y mañana quizás no vendrá Ayúdame hoy, yo quiero vivir Un día a la vez One day at a time, sweet Jesus That's all I'm asking from you Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Tú ya viviste entre los hombres Tú sabes Señor que hoy está peor Es mucho el dolor Hay mucho egoísmo y mucha maldad Señor por mi bien yo quiero vivir un día a la vez Un día a la vez mi Cristo es lo que pido de ti Dame la fuerza para vivir un día a la vez mi Cristo y mañana quizás no vendrá ayúdame hoy yo quiero vivir un día a la vez one day at a time sweet Jesus that's all I'm asking from you Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Lord, help me today. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Amen. This concludes our service this evening. Thank you so much for being here for the Ramos Aguilar family. Please keep them in your prayers. May the Lord bless and keep you all and bring you the comfort that only he can bring by the power of his spirit through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.